Um, okay, uh, let's call the meeting to order. Um, Alan, thank you for your minutes from December. Um, somebody want to make a motion to approve them? Don't move. Uh, Allison just seconded. Susan, you were looking down at your. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I'm both. Oh, you're not. You I'm don't have to apologize. I just saw that you were looking at your keyboard. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, just trying to keep up. Do we have any discussion or corrections or anything like that? Okay. Trying to get everybody's correction. So let's hope they stick. Um, okay. Uh, all in favor of the minutes? Okay. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Thanks. Um, so the next subject on the agenda is the possibility of uh, putting together an area submission for North Street. It's kind of interesting given all the neighborhoods that were, were already done that this one wasn't done, isn't it? Um, 30 years ago in 1993. Mm. I can't believe that was 30 years ago, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect that I just thought of as several neighborhoods, actually. Yeah, it might not have been recognized as as such then. Whatever, it seems worth doing, so. Um, well, for the record yeah. and, and, and for my benefit, can you just um, run down, what are the benefits of, of doing this? Well, it, it helps create a document of the history of the area that's readily accessible to people. Mm -hmm. And an architectural record. Yeah. It is a framework if one wanted to go on for National Register listing, which then makes individual properties more eligible for grants provide some protection from other, other laws. Um, it would be harder for somebody to put up, say, a, a cell tower or something in a district that's a National Register district, I think, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Harder to put a highway through. Um, well, pipeline. Although, pipeline. Right. Pipeline. Yeah. Right. Um, well, although Judy, would you agree that the the barriers that it helps to correct or, or erect rather are more they're not legal? <laughs> oh, I disagree. Um, right. Well, the barriers are that it makes it very difficult if if you want to fight back to use federal or state money to do anything or and or subsidies and subsidies can can include a, a license or something like that yeah, um, loan guarantees i think are a part of it as well loan guarantees um i argued once on a 40b that uh, that the low interest rate subsidy was was part of this if nothing else, you can slow it down, but you can really stop it. That's that's part of this whole issue with the with the native lands and the rotary down on on Route Five and Ten. It's, oh, I absolutely I absolutely agree that we could that it is useful in terms of mounting an argument against an unwanted intrusion. <laughs> well, uh, except that yeah. uh, Mass is. Historical Commission can stop it. The issue is trying is getting them off their rear ends to do it, but they have the authority right. to stop it. So um, it's it's there. I I actually think that the the National Register District has a better aura. I mean, it means something to people that a local area form doesn't. Uh, but you don't get there without the area form. And I, I well, think yeah. that, that documenting yeah. the history in a, in a, is is the best. You know, putting it in one place for people 
to consult with is is the major benefit. But I um I looked uh, very briefly at our macro centuries this morning, and by my count, if you take North Street, you know, from the Dingle to the Hillside Dairy. Uh, there are already entries for 10 houses, multiple entries for Quan Quan, multiple entries for Hillside and the Baronis Farms, and a really funny entry about the mongrel bridge next to Nasami. Just that is that is the word that, that um, uh, someone, and I can't remember the date, I'm sorry, I should have printed it because it was quite interesting. Say um, that again. Mongrel, you know, like stray yeah. dog. What's what's the bridge? Bridge, bridge, the bridge. The way the way the bridge. It's not there the, anymore. Well, the current bridge was submitted up together with a number of other bridges across Massachusetts for national register status, and ten or so bridges were rejected, and this was one of them. Now this is newer That's, than this one washed out. This is no, so out. maybe the maybe the mongrel bridge is no more. The mongrel bridge is no more. Um, yeah, I would say. Do they mean do they mean jury rigged sort of half half asked? Is that what they I, mean? I, I don't think it had to do with jury jury rigging. I think it had to do with, to with sloppy sloppy and sloppy, inauthentic right. um, construction. That's my. If you go. If you go into the macro centuries on North Street, there is one that has no name attached to it. And for that reason, of course, I clicked on it. <laughs> I'm really sorry I didn't print it now <laughs> since we're talking about it. And you get to this correspondence about bridge, uh, not just in Waitley, but as I said, a list of 10 or 12 bridges. Um, most of the rest of them were in the east, eastern part of the state. We unearthed photos of of the bridge being replaced at some point, and it looked like it was the 70s. Remember, if we're in our Roaring Brook thing, we have yes, some yes. of a bridge, bridge project. This one was, I, I think if you go look at it, and it's probably in some men on it. It's uh, got a date. It has a big date, a date on it. I would say yeah. 2000 or. I, I think you're right. I think it's, Susan, do you know? It's right you're on you're the talking about the bridge right by our, right by the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's 1999 yeah. with all the nines. Yeah misaligned with the baseline yeah. one. That's yeah. what I noticed. They I did not say it was the 90s, so that sounds it, right. Yeah. It is graphically offensive. <laughs> graphically offensive. <laughs> All the nines are drunk. <laughs> so the point I was making before I got us distracted by the mongrel bridge, I just love that. Um it is that there's a fair amount of documentation in Macris about this area already, but not about it, about the contents of the area. But 10 houses is not every single house, obviously. Um, I, I liked Judy and I were in a, a different meeting the other day. And uh, Judy, you mentioned that it has the advantage that there were four dairy farms on this well, uh, section North reminds, Street, which is which is uh, really compelling, I think. It, it reminds I, me I, of the Canterbury entry, which which uh, t seems to tie itself together by the fact that there's 13 tobacco barns from top to bottom. Right. And that it's so agricultural. I think you could make some of the same case for this stretch of road too. From yeah, I, I was to making, dairy. making the case in that meeting that this was a representative of a different kind of agriculture than you found down on River Road, that this was sure. more hay fields and dairy farms and orchards and less- uh, More upland. Upland, yeah. Some crops obviously Sheep. because corn and tobacco grow every place in Waitley, but- um, But also some manufacturing because in the Dingle, there was a tannery, there was a distillery, there were certain things organized around this stream, the stream by uh, 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 Mary Abel's house, you know, that's the, the cider mill. Crafts, the cider mill was there. Yeah. And then down to Roaring Brook with all of that going on. Right, mm -hmm. and I was saying, right, if you included Roaring Brook, then that gives you more- um, more I didn't know if that if Roaring Brook would be a separate area for him, actually. I didn't, you might want to think about that. 
Is, is this what we're filling out? We're making it an, an area? Is that that's what we're talking? Right that's word? what we're talking about now. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, it's it's the macros hierarchy ha has confused me because an area can refer to a neighborhood, but it can also refer to something like a farm that has it's five or six different structures. It's it, yeah. It's it's more than a one building. Of structures actually is is probably the defining. Is yeah. Quant Quant an area? Is yeah, that what an, you said the other day. Yeah. Okay. You have you have an area listing, and then there is a listing for the farmhouse, and well, I guess for your house, and, and then the big uh, the big yellow house. house. Yeah. And maybe for the barns separately. Do you remember, Judy? I don't remember. <laughs> they are, are five, five, five. But I know when I didn't did the Oliver Morton, which is my grandfather's. There were like four or five separate separate uh, building form Bs and then the, the one area listing. Would, um, I, I was, I also noticed um, in my very quick review of a few area uh, entries that they st always start out with giving the total acreage involved. Would North Street as a district would it be sensible to count the acreage of everything that fronts on North Street? I mean, would that be the way we would limit it? Yeah, and I think you want to think about the limits because if you're talking hillside dairy, you really want to include the area that's now the um, campground. Well, because that's part of the Verona's history. There's a history to that swamp, though, too, you know, before. Yeah. You know, there's a there's there's a deep story there. Mm -hmm. That's probably another area, but yeah, depending. I don't know that the. I noticed the National Register districts don't really get into acreage, and and they, the ones we have now, focus more on the historic properties than on the landscape. And I, I was glad to go back because I had remembered the organizing structure of listing um, the buildings by century or by rest more by architectural period. They're not, and, and that is that's the protocol for the National Register listings. But the the area listings seem more, at least the ones for Waitley are each organized in ways that make sense for that area. That yeah. must not be quite as the architectural uh, style seems very art 100 to me you know yeah um it's interesting i, I was also thinking about the fact that I, I mean i am not remembering right now when when was north street given its own name well, when did it awesome. stop giving i mean we, we know this because of our endless scenic road discussions, That's a good question. I mean, endless, but, but it is, it, this is a known factor. It was in the 20th century, wasn't it? I, I would think so. I think so, huh, Judy? Because it was- I thought I saw a reference to it being, still being Chestnut Plain in the 70s. I don't remember where I saw that. No. I think it's I know something that Kwong, you sent around as part of- Kwong, Kwong. Quan Quan gave its address in the 20s as being on North Street. I've oh, seen interesting. it. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and some of it is the, stationary. In the 70s, the address numbers were different. So maybe our house, our house is now 106 and it used to be 64. So. Yeah. But I was I was thinking about Chestnut Plain Road, the current Chestnut Plain Road particularly the section at the top, particularly the National Register District, which goes down to 155 to Jay Kaplan's house. And thinking it, it really is different in character from the former north end of Chestnut Plain Road. I mean, houses in my neighborhood had fields and had farm animals. But I don't think many of them were farms in the sense that some of the properties on North, they weren't as expansive. The houses are just closer together. Even if you even if you weed out the houses that have been built since uh, 1910. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and there were shops here, of course. 
I mean, there are three or four houses that were shops and a blacksmith. And a tavern, uh, or two. a tavern or two. Multiple, multiple taverns. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the shed that was taken down from behind town hall was at one point a blacksmith's shop on one of the one of the 19th century historic maps that's still marked as a blacksmith shop. So anyway, it's it's interesting that I mean it makes sense to me. That is a historical evolution because I think there were a lot more farms in the 19th century there. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody farmed to some extent then. Because yeah. you know, you just have to read Wendell Berry. You know, everybody did. Yes. Everybody has some animals. Everybody had a cow. Some, everybody had yeah. some chickens. Everybody grew some stuff, right? But they, right? right. They, yeah, right. but I think in in the twentieth, in the early twentieth century, uh, at Labello's house, which was Ferrex, they farmed all the way down to the river. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, well, they and they still own the farm road in from um, Christian Lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and. Um, and one I of the and, and one of the fields, Flavin, which was where Mary Stewart lives now, farmed in back of there, hmm. uh, up to quite a ways, and and mm -hmm. probably other places. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I was talking more about sort of relative proportion than an absolute yeah. yes or no. Yeah. <laughs> um, so your question was, how do we define the edges of this area? <laughs> I don't see another way besides another scientific way to do it besides where the po property boundaries or the river is. It, on the on the uh, east side. Yep. I mean, yeah. Which is the property. Which well, no, I mean, I don't know that it's I the builders may own across the river. Do they, Judy? I don't know. Looks like they do. I don't know. The state has bought up so much of that land. But yeah, they own some, are still they own across, some the across the river. Yeah. Too. I mean, we owned across the river to to like Scott's own across the river, certainly. But well, and this is not the right. area we're talking about, but the Brooks is next to us own their section of the Mill River and land on the other side. Well, the whole town was laid river. out in these you know, in these completely arbitrary ribbons, east-west narrow ribbons, and a lot of that's still with us yep. in those property boundaries. Just yep. arbitrary it's lines common. drawn in drawn in an office somewhere without any regard to what they crossed or what you got. Well it was also to keep the frontage narrow because the taxes were determined by the amount of frontage. I mean, as yeah, they people, are, you know, you know the way in Charleston together. and Savannah, the houses are all turned perpendicular to keep those frontage uh, widths as narrow as possible. I think in this We've case, heard about that. Was, I think in this case, it's more a function of the part of England that the settlers came from. You know, the town layouts mm -hmm. are very much uh, They're often shaped, used to but, common field kinds of things that, where people lived in a nucleated fashion and they had fields that they, from, sometimes individually, sometimes common outside it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. but there's mm -hmm. a lot well, of that's variations. True. That's, that's very true in Deerfield, where they had yep. both the dwelling house lot, an agricultural lot that was relative to where your place was on the, you know, if you were at the south end of town, then you had the south end of the agricultural fields. And then you but also they had- weren't, But they weren't contiguous. No, no, and then you no, had a wood lot up on, you know, up on the ridge someplace was your wood lot that came with it. Right, right. I don't know that we, I think probably the river might be a reasonable boundary in terms of the story we want to tell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't, I think you could reference the fact that the farms originally went further back, but. You don't need to define the area that way, unless you wanted to relate it to the heritage landscape and that. Is there precedence for the Canterbury thing where they've defined it? How, how have they defined it? Did you notice? I didn't notice. Is it property boundaries or historic property boundaries? Surely back in you know 1770, those property boundaries went all the way down to the river somehow. Yeah. That, I just remember that is I haven't looked at it for several weeks. It's it's a very skimpy survey, actually, area form. Yeah, I can't. 
I I wasn't focusing on this, but those forms state a total acreage, but then the maps they provide are the cute little hand-drawn maps <laughs> with triangles yeah. and squares. Well, they look and like they were <laughs> done in the in the glory days of stencils. Remember, Alan, yes. you could oh, yeah. plastic stencils with all the shapes on them and you could yeah, make letter set and all yeah. of the stuff. Yeah, 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 that's I remember that those days. So um templates. Yep. I, I mean, I think we could uh, you could probably even skip that. I don't know. So if we were gonna if we were gonna do this, we would we would have essentially a project in both for after we define what it is in writing up the area and then renewing the entries for the buildings? Um, that, the latter is a lot of work. I mean, Judy can speak to this because she is the only one among us who's done anything like this in the time I've, in the last 12 years, I think I've been on this committee, 10 or 12, more than 10. Um, but- it, Well, I was thinking of- it's a lot of work to do that. It's a lot of work to do right. a fully complete one to be filed, but is it all those would, ones would I it be to update your house in the last, would it would it be tell me tell me what's those entries seem to define the house. They say it's a two-story with a yeah. you know, space there and a, a colonial doorway, and a lot of that's still true. Yeah, and a lot there, of that's true. What's I, I was gonna say maybe we should start by going back and updating the surveys because the ones that are there because Derricka Smith has done a lot of work on deeds and it's wrong. A lot of places it's wrong. And if we're gonna be doing the history, I suspect having some of the deed work in front of us would help clarify the history. I have all of, yeah, I have all of Derricka's um, house histories because I was, um, I'm waiting until Alan, until Alan can, be more mobile because I was foolish enough to say to her before these are posted on the website it would be nice to have photographs of the house you know to, oh, to, yeah. to make because right now it's kind of raw notes I mean to make something of them and then I realized how many she has done and I was anyway I have committed to helping her to do that um you're saying we should I, update I'm sorry I want to make sure I'm capturing this starting no, point is updating the existing Macros entries. Well, that is the starting point. And I, I, so I started trying to update ours. Um, gosh, I think it's probably four or five years ago now. Um, partly because I was so, you know, if you've looked at any of them, they're just full of grammatical and punctuation errors. They simply weren't given final copy editing. Okay, fine. It's a big project. And I did the house part. There was no was, word processing. Well, there was apparently no proofreading either, which is, you know, um, but um, I got hung up on the ownership history and I had uh, figured out how to use Franklin County's records part and uh, I've forgotten who's the name, which, which of the Mass Historical Commission people is the one who, is it Peter Stott who works on these? <laughs> Judy, I think so. Yeah. He wrote back and explained that someone named so-and-so was actually the nephew of someone also named so-and-so and I got caught I mean I just I, I just put it aside but I need to go back I think I could finish well, that's, mine that's what Derricka has done and so as, it, now that Derricka has done that I think I could go back and I have you reminded and me and I think the rest of it is fairly straightforward I don't I mean, three of us would be doing that to places that we're living now, right? Susan, you're included. Yeah, definitely. Right, right. But has, has much happened to your buildings, you know? In well, they, they completely renovated the barn. Right, well, you'd say so that's, that's, that's what you'd say. The barn's been renovated, but it, it's, right. you know, uh, that doesn't seem very complicated to me. But does internal renovation... No, not much. this is all exterior. Not, not okay. unless you've turned it into a pot shop or something that, you know, repurposed. Yeah, it. If, if the, I think the fact that there's a new business there would be relevant. Okay. Yeah. And we know of some of the, thanks to Sylvia, we know of some of the external changes, like, you know, doors that 
are no longer there and external right. stairs and things like that. Sylvia can help with that, help us with that. Right. Would, and you, I, would, you, would you say all of that though, Donna? Every time you get a new screen when you know door, you you put it on? No. No, no, but I remember, for example, that uh Peter Stott agreed that um I had a, a set, we had a second chimney in this house that was not original that was added sometime in the last century and I noted that there had been one and it had been removed and he he approved that <laughs> I mean okay. I, I'll go back and look to see what else I did I don't I just and, and you put the vision well, like you Donna commented that the work my parents did uh, making the porch area and the loft on our on our house never got in, was never updated to show that right uh, well, although they did that before 1993 didn't they yeah they did so i don't yeah but you know again again one consultant was hired and you know her job was mostly to collect what was available <laughs> and, and so, you know sometimes parts come down or sometimes they're moved or um, yeah or I do, vinyl, I vinyl siding goes up or you know things that but by and large it's it's not a big deal i think to update it if if when you're working from a structure that's reasonable but it was hard with my grandfather's because the property was divided and sold and some of the exist some of the area forms were duplicates and you know so it it, it got what it started as one address wound up as three and you, you know it got fairly complicated but they're mostly not like that would you have entry could, for the newer houses? Would that have to be included? Things that have, is there a time? You can, you can just list, you know, capes and built in the 1970s. But what about <laughs> historic properties that are not listed? And I'm thinking of Lynn Sibley's house. One would, that, yeah, is, that would take some work. But it would, that would take some work. Out. So maybe maybe a thing to do is to go and look more closely at the addresses at the ten houses that are listed and think about what other structures. I think hers is the only one, unless if if others are more than fifty years old, they probably deserve a. That brings me to history anyway. If not a new form, they, they Carolyn and Dorothy's. That I don't believe there's one for that but it's more than 50 years. I think that was from the 40s. That was one of the original Sears Roebuck house kits. Oh, that's nice. Oh. I didn't know that. I didn't know Directly that across from the entrance to Nasami. The purple house. Oh. Isn't it yeah. purple? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just want to go back to the question why we would do this. Um, well, I, I, think, I think another reason that comes to my mind is that I think... I'm willing to have it be part of our responsibility to educate town residents about the history of the town. And um, a few years ago, maybe now it's more than a few, every time when I, and, and we worked on this together, when someone, when an historic house in town changes hands, I write to the new owner to say, welcome, here's some information, Here's the area form. Here's the, you know, you, you know, let us know if we can do anything for you, that kind of thing. And, you know, some people ignore it, but I've certainly had a couple of people say, I really appreciated that. Um, yeah. And, and um, so that's, you know, that's a, a passive benefit, but I think it's a good one. Um, so, not going immediately to the terrible question of who would do this, <laughs> no. unless someone wants to go to that question. I wonder if an, a good thing to do to continue the conversation would be for each of us to go back and read everything that's in Macris now for North Street so that we could have a more specific conversation about, you know, errors and gaps and what well, I think also those of us who who live in a house ought to up be, be charged with updating our forms. Hmm. Yeah, there's certainly some extra changes could, to ours. So, yeah. If you could, if you have the, all of Derek's work, uh, if you could 
pull out I'll the next street. That would be. I absolutely, I absolutely can understand, but you just you understand, but you should understand that this is really raw, unedited. It'll just be, you know. Yeah, that's. It, it, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a lot better than going through the county, the Franklin County Registry of Deeds, while you're yeah. at infinitum. Um, she is. She has not prepared them. I'd, detailing every single source document the way she does, but you, you could certainly go to her if you wanted to ask her. I mean, I'm sure she's kept her notes. This reminds me, this is quite off the subject, but if you haven't yet, um, Derricka's 18th and 19th century Im improved uh, genealogies are now all posted on the Historical Society website. And I, I recommend them. <laughs> it's, it's really very, um, very impressive what she's done. Uh, she tells me that the 20th century will be as big as the first 19 chapters put together. <laughs> 20th and 21st centuries, I guess. Um, so that's a good idea to, um, I, I will look at my house too, just. Anything else anybody thinks we ought to do? I'm also thinking, you know, once we look through the other properties, because these are our neighbors, between the three of us, we probably know most of the people and can share theirs with them and get their input on them, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, like Jonathan Corman's house, you know, that would fall under one of the historic places that would be interesting. Right. I mean, another benefit... Uh -huh. As you say, that's is another one that's been updated since '93 too. Has it? Which, yeah, which like, property is that? The, the arts and crafts. The arts and crafts house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah he took did. off a porch and put that front room on. And I was driving to visit my parents and horrified that somebody was going to spoil this gorgeous arts and crafts without realizing it was Jonathan Corman. And of course he wouldn't do that. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's it's not a thorough arts and crafts house, you know, the exterior. No, it's a bungalow. It's, it's, it's a bungalow. Yeah, yeah well, well, yeah, I know what it is. It, <laughs> um, with, I mean, you, he's, if, the, he's the first one to say that. <laughs> If you look um, at the picture with the no no um, it, it it was always a bungalow and I I'm I wonder who built it because it was at one time housing for Quanquant workers and we have photos of it from you know the 30s or the 40s. Interesting. It had it had the most amazing front porch with a stone all of big st it. rounded stones. Mm. Mm. And if you saw that, you would clearly say bungalow. Yeah. The one that we owned in um, Indiana, which had all, I mean, beautiful, beautiful interior detail, um, including things like pass-throughs. We uh, we uh, figured out that a pass-through had been closed up with drywall at one point, beautiful Cortisan oak. Um, they were so well designed, our porch, uh, which had the tapered columns and everything that went with it, um, had um, weep holes cut into the stucco <laughs> so that the water wouldn't sit on the porch. I mean, they were really, really nicely designed. Uh, but. Well, it's interesting, um, the, little, the little ranch next to Lim's house is actually a, Quon a Quonset hut. Yep. Yeah, so that one may qualify too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was that was there and, and they put that up for the bicentennial. So even the framework now is over 50 years old. Mm -hmm. And Sunny's house would be too. So we should be prepared to see. Here's a meeting where it really would be better to be in one room and looking at a map. We should we should study up a little bit so that the next when we when we continue our conversation, we can kind of walk down the street, <laughs> house by house, um, and and see where we are. Um, do you think there's any point in um, contacting? I think I'm asking a rhetorical question because I think the answer might be yes. Contacting Peter to say, do you have any current advice for working on an area form? A new well, area I'd go form? the other he, way. He, you would, he, you he would do have it to be that rigid. It's not, yeah. it's not that 
Okay. It, uh, each each place tells its own story. Mm -hmm. Just put together something that makes sense. Okay. Okay. So anything else? I'm right. just thinking in, in terms of you know historical material. I don't know how many of you have seen the um, map that Fred got of Chestnut Plain. It's like a 30 foot long roll of Chestnut Plain to North Street from 1901 that shows every property, what was you know, who was there, all of that, that we can help fill in some gaps, at least for that time period. And I don't know at the moment if that piece is here or is at the Historical Society. It's gone back and forth. No, it was so interesting. It was in the, it was at the Historical Society. That's where I've seen it. Yeah, Fred was bringing it home at one point to do repairs on it. Uh, but either either it's in one place or the other, and it will end up at the Historical Society. But for the time being, if we needed that for reference of what was mm -hmm. here at that point in time, we at least have a, a reference for it. Maybe it's with those green dragon people he sent me to who cost me a fortune to have some stuff. <laughs> the, the, Charles Wait, the Charles Waite map is another one. And the, you know, the 1871 map, they all, mm -hmm. a lot of those have house names on them and schools and. Yeah. Right, right. Either and the Ainsworth map has hills, hmm. or at least the cider mill, I think. But anyway, we can we have, we have resources. Um, so, what do we think about Waitley Glen and the one property on Glen Road? Judy, you're thinking it sh it should be its own area. That that makes more sense. Well, you guys are the ones who've been doing the research, but I would think her that property the does go down to North Street. You know, across from the wildlife management area, that slope opposite Sue's house, Judy, and yeah. Yeah, that's but is that, it is it the whole history of that the the Sanderson and Indian Hill and um, the it the could easily be carved board. off as its own district for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm, I've I'm got thinking a that story to tell. I'm thinking that makes more sense. Yeah, but we might also, if we each kind of cruise up and down, think: Are there other properties that are? set back I, I hate to raise this topic but um the um i've forgotten their name but the people with the gate across from the belder farm wadham wadham ben wadham ben wadham um was that property open farmland before they bought it it belonged to uh ferrick belonged to ralph ferrick uh it was in my time anyway, Woodlots, he had a tobacco barn up there just above where the gate is. Mm -hmm. um, I have photos of that. And but there was no, there was no original house there. It was always a, an, an, an ancillary agricultural lot. As I believe saying. that's right. He had up there, there's a pond. Yeah, but no house. And he had a little uh, mock covered bridge. He had and a he little had water wheel too. With a, it was a like a little recreation area for him, I think, sort of where you go and have picnics and things. And um, but there, it's logging, it's logging trails, and mm -hmm. he owned what sixty acres or something. Uh, it's more than that, I think. I think it's a hundred, maybe, Judy. Okay. And the and the houses that you see on the west side behind the Scott farm, are those Scott family houses? The yes. new they look like 70s yes. or 80s houses. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I my guess is the Farrick land was Crafts land once. But Again, the, the deeds would show that probably. So another another reason or outcome of a sort of property by property review, which we can do separately and together, is that 
for that kind of property, uh, we could ask Derica if she could do some research on. Uh, um, she she sent me an email last week asking if I knew anything. She's do, working on the Crafts Diary, George Crafts mm -hmm. Diary. Mm -hmm. And she said he had referred to a hemlock knoll. And did I know of a, where he grew tobacco? And did I know of a hemlock knoll on? And she thought it would be on the east side of the North Street. And I said I couldn't think of anything you would call a knoll except up where Scott's land, the pasture land up there. But I didn't think he, he or I thought the Scots had always owned that. Um, so I wondered if it wasn't that area where Ralph Farrick had his little pond, because that's fairly flat, that section. But so I'm not sure how much she knows about the economics of it or the or the actual history, I guess is what I'm backing into. But you mm -hmm. never know with Erica. So mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. All right. Are we all okay with this? Do some research, do some thinking. I found a yeah. picture of the bungalow. Judy, do you want to see? I don't know if you can see it this way. Yeah. Um, yeah I, what? The bridge. What is the porch? Nice. See the porch? But it's brick, mm -hmm. it's like cobblestone. Anyway. <laughs> and shingles, all shingles. That still is shingle, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah. But painted. This looks like it's raw wood. Yeah, like cedar shake. The yeah. way the the um, the roof on the roof house was until the metal roof went on. Um, okay, good, good. Um, so the other thing we had said we were going to talk about in October, November, and got distracted um, was Alan's uh, work on likely indicators for archaeological sites. And Alan, when I wrote to you, you said you wanted to you wanted to think about something else, soil, some soil questions? Uh, What's some, soil, some general stuff, I think, on, on trying to identify what makes for prehistoric sensitivity. And we got a bit of information from uh, Eric Johnson at UMass, uh, what used to be UMass Archaeological Services, but what they used as, uh, as guidelines for determining what sensitivity was. And a lot of that turns out to be stuff that we can probably do ourselves. I, was, I think I might just write a, a brief <laughs> a paragraph that, uh, that we could add to whatever it is we send to people that identifies with a sort of high, medium, or low sensitivity, which I think is what Eric was talking about uh, for whatever properties exist. So we can give people some sense of a heads up about what they might expect to find if they were to actually do some digging there. Um, I did turn up my old soils and archaeology um, information, which really turns out to be more about how to interpret the sidewalls in a test pit. Yeah. But, but it does turn out that there is a whole uh, a USDA survey, um, soil surveys, that was done of the entire United States, but uh, also includes Waitley. And I've got uh, a, a link to the website that where you can make your own map. And a lot of the stuff that we're interested in doing, identifying soil types and, and the like, um, since that's a large part of what um, marks historic, uh, prehistoric sensitivity uh, is the kinds of soil you're dealing with. Uh, we can actually identify survey stuff from this town um, that's on a map produced by the USDA. Um, I think this stuff is also available in Massachusetts GIS systems. Yeah, on the Mass Mapper site. Yes, Mass Mapper is one of them. But there's also a separate USDA site that's, I'm still learning how to use it, but it's, um, it is accessible and it, it produces reports. Um, I've got a bit of one here, which you can't see too clearly, but it's a, a custom, mm -hmm. custom soil resource report for Franklin County, Massachusetts. Uh, it's really for an NRA of Christian Lane, which has probably a hundred different soil types within it. And we can identify all of them, any of them, and pretty much any any property. And I'm trying to figure out ways of linking this to um, uh, 
uh, the site plans that are the uh, property line indexes that uh, that the town has produced as well. What are they called? Um, assessors. Property. Yeah, the assessors maps um, or those things. So between um, linking those things with the USDA maps and the top of maps that we have available, we can reproduce pretty much anything that uh, that would pass for a uh, on a UMass survey um, for this town. For so, if we want to look at say 83 State Road or whatever the, that property was, we can look at the the slope and the types of soil that are available. You want know, to disturbance how close it is to water. Um, how close it is to other resources that people are interested in, like stonework um, and that sort of thing. And we can do a lot of this ourselves at least on a um, on a rudimentary level. Uh, and mm -hmm. Put it in whatever letter that we want to send to uh, the planning board or whoever else might be interested in that sort of thing. It's so funny it's because... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, it, it's funny that you brought this up because just this week, Leslie was looking up her parents' property in the middle of Ohio. And if you go to the assessor site for that county, one of the most prominent pieces of information after they say how many acres it is and maybe what you paid for it um, yep. is the soil types that it contains. Yep. Because those it's have been big time farm country and that's what you yep. want to know. Yeah, and this this used to be so. All the flats are extremely well surveyed. The hillsides are rockier, and stonier, and like us, it's harder to uh, uh, to figure out whether they're really good for farming or not. But that that was one of the main the main impetus for a lot of the soil survey stuff that was done here, and we do have a lot of that. A lot of that information is available to us. So, Alan, you are you are very far in front of me. <laughs> On this, okay. <laughs> which is great, which is great, <laughs> because I looked again at the, at the document that you had sent us and thought, oh, so we would extract the the bullet points, <laughs> you yeah. know, essentially, and and maybe I, I wasn't actually thinking of an audience for this um, beyond us, and it sounds like you are. I was well. I was thinking Which, more of the yeah. the people are going to do work just to give them fair warning about what we might expect from, or what we might want them to look for, or what we would look for in an area. Um, uh -huh. So it's it's mainly meant for us, but it's a sort of a an exercise in figuring out okay, we're we're asking people to be to look out for prehistoric stuff, but we don't really give them any sense of um, how how like like they are to encounter something um and, and we we're doing it so part of that mm -hmm. is writing something to to give to them and it doesn't have to be very elaborate uh, it's just our assessment of you know you're not likely to find anything or you are likely to find something um, if you i'm, do I'm looking at the mass mapper site right now and there's a whole soil section there is a section i haven't made it come up to be anything useful yet but uh, the usda one is is actually quite helpful um, Alan, see. you might want to talk to somebody on the Ag Commission because yep. I was at a meeting once for the planning board and they were trying to define the difference between extremely valuable farmland and not so extremely valuable. I, I don't know the exact wording. Well, they well prime, it, for prime farmland actually is defined by some somehow well, by the they were trying to, <laughs> no. yeah they were trying to determine what they would want to recommend or or they, they were trying to develop a filter for something i i don't remember necessarily what the filter was but okay. or how it was going to be used but it was obviously going to need to be parcel related at some point yeah. so um you might i and Doug Caldwell is chair effective chair i think these days i don't i can get you i think i can find his phone number from the cpc yeah i think but, I, um, I know someone is on that committee too um so, margaret christie uh bill bear uh well bill you know um no it's actually a farmer doug something i think um not, not chumutka dave chumutka 
David may be on it. I think he is yep. on it. And there's a Jim Galanka. Jim Galanka. Um that's a look. Anyway, the list is the yeah. list is obviously on point yeah. I don't think Bill O'Bear was at this meeting. Um, but okay. I find Doug and Margaret most responsive to emails, but yeah, I know Margaret anyway, for sure. So, okay. And if you, you know, if you wanted to, to get it onto the assessor's map layer list, um, they'd probably be very interested in that and help with that. Yeah. Okay. And I learned the other day that the GIS person at FERCOG is called Ryan Clary. I can send you his email. Yeah, I think we may have run across his name at some point too. Okay. That'd be good. Good. Thank you. Sorry, I'm I'm blathering on and I've got myself muted. Um, you're thinking <laughs> of extracting some material from Eric's document and embedding it in something that we might end up sending at least to the planning board to yeah. say you yeah. might find this useful. Well, it's timely because the planning board has agreed, <laughs> thank you very much, Judy, that we no longer have to write every single time someone wants a site plan review to say, if you find some uh, any evidence of archaeological activity, stop working and to... Uh, yeah, I, I don't think we've... Has yeah, that actually been... Has it been drafted <laughs> into the, their standard document? Yeah. Judy, that was the, yeah, I don't think I've seen that. I don't, I don't think I've seen well, what the, the wording is. The document appears as a, we have a standard condition form that gets attached to the site plan review. It's not, mm -hmm. it's just pulled out when you're doing an approval. It's not a document on its own. I see. Yeah. I know more or less looking for something more than we can just pull out. Of, we're just pulling, we're not pulling this out of the air. We have some reason for asking people to be aware that's all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that sounds great i'm i'm thank you for offering to do that i think that's terrific um con con you know, would be interesting. Draft something but yeah okay um any other business to discuss i don't think so um, I have I have a topic. I, I don't want to. I, I don't really want to propose discussing it, but I want to raise it. Um, uh, as uh, I was asked recently um, in connection with a an historic house that is um, being allowed to fall down, um, is there anything anyone can do to intervene? And my answer was, well, we don't have a demolition delay ordinance in this town. Um, many towns in Massachusetts do. The towns in Western Mass that do are mostly the bigger ones, uh, Amherst, Northampton, Greenfield, maybe some of the big ones. And I didn't really look too much at Berkshire County. Uh, I, um, I have to say, I, at least from reading the Gazette, which is not always the most thorough and accurate reporting of situations, I haven't seen much evidence that they have uh, solved problems, the demolition delays in those two towns that maybe deferred them. Um, but, it, but that's not a very informed point of view on my part. So I'm, should we have a conversation at least to educate ourselves about what a demolition delay ordinance is at some point and talk about that? Probably. Yeah, I think you should. The issue is going to come up sooner or later, anyway. But. I would, I would say no, having been through one. <laughs> had, in, a, in another had town. Way too much experience with one, but I would say it. I, I, where it actually, I think, was quite helpful. So it's not because it's not helpful, but the only problem that it does not solve very well is demolition by neglect. It's, right. it's essentially powerless at that. Uh, I, I, that, it's, it, that I, I think is our major problem here. So, um, and but. and I'm I am thinking 
there are two separate uh, topics. One is to be sure that we're all reasonably well educated about what one is and how it works in different places and what works and doesn't work. And the second one discussion, which is I think where you are, Judy, is whether we want to impose one. Yeah, well, because I, you, know, I, 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 you, may, you may be the only person who uh, on the committee. Well, I would be happy to, to do a five minute overview on what it is and how it works. And why don't we, unless anybody's really dying to do that right now, what time is it? Why can't I see a clock? Well, it's, six. Six. it's six. What if I suggest that we, if we're going to go back to, if we're going to revisit North Street, and do you think you'll have something for us on the archaeological uh, review, Alan, a month from now? I can, yeah. yeah. Oh, if if we're going to talk about these the same two topics again, having learned more since they've occupied an hour very nicely today, I I would promise to not to forget about demolition delays and to say now we should you know start that conversation. Does that sound okay? Sure. I think probably in the there used to be a. There's this book about tools or helpful things for historical commissions about preservation and options and tools that you have. And one of the one of them is demolition delays. I think there's like a two-page description in that or something. I'll see if I can find it. Okay. Okay. And we can also ask Jen, I've forgotten her last name, the woman who now staffs the listserv for materials. She's actually been quite responsive. Um, but Let's see where we can get on North Street and archaeology first. Okay. Um, since we have some time, I'm looking at my calendar now to see when the next meeting, since we have sometimes continued a conversation for you know, many months. Um, I think our next meeting would be February 20th. Um, also a federal holiday, if that's okay with everybody. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Judy, for suggesting we start with North Street. Obviously, it's, there's a lot of interest, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> um, I'm going to adjoin, adjourn the meeting. Okay. 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 Be well. Take care. Bye. Bye.